at reducing maternal, newborn, and child mortality in Nigeria. He holds a postgraduate degree in public health and business administration. Dr. Kathy has a strong interest in translational science. He has published several peer-reviewed articles on HIV AIDS intervention. Dr. Moses Catby is a UK General Medical Council certified doctor. Dr. Moses Yes, I guess Dr. Kavi can step in now and begin to make his presentation. Over to you, sir. Um, thank you very much. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so this is just an outline of um, some of the presenting points. Next slide, please. So um, as a background, um, HCS coverage is disproportionately low among key population. And um, as a result, it, it is important to ensure that um, we increase HTS coverage among key population. Um, this is critical to preventing new HIV infection and achieving epidemic control amongst them. We do know that for us to achieve epidemic control, new infection rate should um, be lower than HIV-related death. And we cannot achieve this without focusing on increasing testing services for key population. HIV self-testing um, is um, actually, sorry, you're going too fast, please. <laughs> yes, thank you. So um, HIV self-testing um, offers a good opportunity for, you know, increasing testing among KPs. And it's usually what happens in HIV self-testing is that, um, you know, a person collects uh, his or her own specimen which could be oral fluid or blood, and then performs um, an HIV test and interprets the results, often in a private setting. Next slide, please. So this just shows, um, this picture just depicts um, the types of HIV self-testing. The first picture shows the unassisted uh, mo modality. And then the second picture shows the assisted modality where a provider assists the individual to interpret the results. Next slide. So yeah, uh, we're talking about data-driven approach. For HIV self-testing, there is actually one pepfar mer indicator, which is actually HTS self, um, which is actually the number of individual HIV self-test kits distributed. So focus is on the number of test kits distributed, and we do not um, you know, go beyond this for PEPFAR uh, reporting. So this slide, it's um, our FY21 PEPFAR distribution of HIV self-test kit. You would uh, notice that in FY21, we actually distributed more self-test kits to FSW, uh, female sex workers. Um, the least uh, number of kits went to people in prisons. Next slide. Yeah, so this um, this is a bit not so clear, but uh, essentially what this shows is um, like a summary of self-test kit utilization in Nigeria. To the left-hand side, uh, le left-hand side rather, you would notice that um, the number of um, self-assisted uh, or unassisted self-testing is uh, more than the number of um, self, uh, the number of partner unassisted self-testing. To the right-hand side, you would notice that uh, for key population, um, we actually had more um, assisted uh, self-testing compared to uh, men who have sex with men where the unassisted self-testing was actually more than the assisted self-test. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but uh, the slide hasn't moved. 
it has sure. moved. Yes, maybe they have some technical hitches. Okay, uh, maybe maybe I could just uh, continue from from the slides um, that I have. I don't know how that would work out. It still hasn't moved. Do you want me to continue? Well, uh, Moji, the slide isn't moving. What's the problem? Okay, I think they're working on it. So let's okay. give it a little time to see the slide. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Hello, Mabonjubade. We can't hear you. Uh, sorry, we can't see the slide. I think it's bad network. Yeah. Okay, great. Slide this up again. Okay, yeah, so we will start, we'll continue from here. So, um, so yeah, this slide um, actually shows us um, the HIV self-testing in a USAID uh, KP program. And uh, you will notice that uh, for uh, unassisted, um, we had more self-test kits uh, uh, distributed uh, compared to um, the assisted. For both unassisted and assisted, um, we had um, you know, more first time tester than our old time tester. Next slide, please. So this just um, shows um, a summary, um, HIV self-testing also one of our projects. Um, and it shows our, our summary of assisted um, against um, unassisted self-testing in Aquaibom, Cross River, and Lagos. You would also notice that uh, for um, you know, most of the states, um, we had uh, more unassisted self-testing compared to assisted, which is actually you know, the way we want to go. And you would also notice that um, the yield um, is quite encouraging for self-testing as well when we compare this to some of the national average. Ne next slide, please. Um, this slide shows uh, USAID FY21 HIV self-testing distribution by KP types. You will notice in this slide that um, we had more self-testing for female sex workers and followed by men who have sex with men. Um, 
Um, but then when you compare female sex workers to men who have sex with men, we had more assisted for female sex workers as against uh, more unassisted for MSMs for obvious reasons. Next slide. Um, so self-testing among KPs, what are the barriers? Uh, first of all, is usually access to self-testing kits. Uh, nationally, we do not have enough self-test kits and then access to these self-test kits is an issue. Uh, also fear of the unknown. Um, you know, there's this fear of not knowing what the results will be or the outcome will be. And then inadequate knowledge about HIV self-testing is also a major barrier and then meets and meets misconceptions. Next slide. So what are the strategies to optimize self-testing among key populations? And first is the secondary distribution, where social networks um, or distribution is done through pairs. And it's good to note that uh, network-based strategies have actually demonstrated that peer distribution is far better than traditional medical clinics for people going to traditional medical clinics to get these self-test kits. And also free distribution um, is another way to optimize uh, self-testing among KPs, um, where uh, you, you, we utilize pharmacies or retail outlets or health facilities or even one-stop shops. And um, um, I need to mention here that um, there was a willingness to pay study that was done by GSI, funded by USAID in Nigeria, which actually shows that KPs are willing to pay out of pocket when, when they're given the chance to do that. Another way to optimize is using partnership and also virtual online ordering where you could just you know, order an item online and these uh, test kits will be delivered to you just like you are ordering goods and services. And then um, the package also comes uh, with IEC materials as well as condoms, lubricant and um, additional contact information. Next slide. So uh, still on strategies to optimize uh, self-testing among KPs, uh, social media is also another platform platform that's been shown to be quite effective um, for improving uh, self, I mean, for reaching out to key population uh, to assess self-testing services. And uh, this platform could actually be used to target KPs. Next slide. So in terms of linkage to follow-up services, beyond just, um, you know, um, giving people self-test kits, there is need for, um, the program to ensure proper tracking of, of, of you know, the results of this testing. And all KPs HIV self-test program need to ensure there is a confirmatory HIV testing uh, following the national algorithm. So basically, um, once this, um, for instance, someone self-tests and is, they're positive, uh, they are tracked or referred to a clinic where the whole process would be uh, done again in terms of following the national algorithm for testing, where this will be confirmed before they're initiated on treatment. Then information on how and where to access those services should also be provided at the time of distribution of the HIV self-test kits. Direct follow-up services through telephone helpline, um, such as WhatsApp, using WhatsApp or SMS or mobile apps, uh, should also be communicate, communicated at the point of distribution and done within seven days in line with the national HIV self-testing guidelines. Next, next slide. Um, referral facilitation through pair after direct follow-up is also another way where a pair actually supports the referral process. And then access to HIV, access to HIV prevention, such as condoms and PrEP should also be assured where possible for those provided with HIV self-testing, especially for those who are negative. And then information on an access to other sexual health services, including contraceptives, emergency contraceptive prevention services as a whole, you know, should also uh, be provided. Next slide. So I guess I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kato, and I, I want to apologize to you and to the whole house for the technical hitches we had, uh, but uh, you can see they have actually dealt with it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, we should um, write down our comments, 
our questions so that at the end of the presentation, I made the many free presentation, uh, the floor will be open for us to ask those questions and then also make comments. I can see some hands up already, so we give you an opportunity then uh, to be able to ask your question and make your comments. Uh, he has said quite a lot of things. I will just try to recap them while we prepare for the next presenter. Uh, he gave us some data information on HIV tests, self testing and monkey populations. He mentioned the coverage gaps. Also talked about uh, some strategy to bridge that gap. And then the distribution um, is highest. He noticed in his program among the female sex workers and then the least among people in prison. Then the utilization in Nigeria, he also talked about assisted or unassisted and the population group that tends to prefer assisted over unassisted and so on and so forth. And then also built on the barriers. Uh, one of the major one is access to test kits. Also fear of what the result will be. Inadequate knowledge of HIV self-tests, and then also myth and some misconception in the in the among the key populations. Also talked about strategies to address them, uh, to make the kits available. He talked about um, secondary distribution through peers, which has shown to be most effective in making the key population both access and use the test kits. And then free distribution is also important and partnership with the community pharmacists that the private sector to make it available. I also did talk about um, also assessing it virtually. You can order for it virtual, and then that should be a good way. He now talked about linkage and tracking of results. He's, he, he, he mentioned that it's key to track the result, and then also talked about referrals uh, supported by peer in that uh, referral, and then also access to pre-exposure prophylaxis, access to information, and all that. So thank you very much. I uh, know it's a, a very good one. Uh, so we'll be introducing our second speaker. Our yeah. second speaker is uh, um, Dennis Aziogu. He's a country project lead, strengthening HIV step testing in the private sector. Uh, his bio will be given to us after which he can jump in and begin his presentation. Thank you, Anova. Mr. Dennis Ayizobu is a pharmacist with over 20 years experience. He has spent the last 17 years specifically in the development sector, spanning across working with the public, private and social sector, including multi-country experience in Ghana, Sierra Leone and Liberia. Areas of expertise include project management, health system strengthening, procurement and supply chain management, advocacy and community mobilization, and market product development. Dennis has solid progressive experience in applying evidence-based approaches and principles to healthcare programs and preferring solutions for HIV AIDS and SDI treatment and family planning, via burnout communication, health communications, non-communicable diseases, maternal and health, sanitation and hygiene, and leading to safe family operations across the Dennis is currently the country project lead for the Right, thank you very much. Dennis, you can drop it now. Over to you, Me sir. Ayizobu is a pharmacist. All right. Um, thank you, Dr. Ndukwe, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure to actually share some of our, my thoughts um, as we begin to look at um, the place for total market approach in adopting it to begin to drive equity and sustainable access to HIV um, self-test. I think in terms of background or journey so far, this is what is probably known, and uh, some of which has been said by Dr. Ndukwe and then also echoed or re-echoed by the last speaker. Uh, we know that there's a target of 95, 95, 95, which is aiming at ending the epidemic by 2030. 
But however, um, one of the big challenge to achieving these targets is in terms of the number of undiagnosed um, HIV infections, uh, which remains a big barrier in terms of uh, the global ability to meet these targets. And of course, that also is very specific in terms of how we're able to achieve uh, what we call the target of the first 95, uh, which currently requires several approaches to address. And of course, um, quite a number of the challenges which um, has been mentioned by the earlier speakers, some of which are with the rich rates. But in order to ad address some of these needs or address some of these gaps and challenges, um, both at the global level and at the country level, led by the Federal Ministry of Health, um, mm -hmm. HIV self-testing has been adopted as an additional approach to HIV testing services. Um, like the earlier speaker spoke about, HIV self-testing can be assisted and can also be unassisted. The aim of this is to improve HIV testing service in high-risk group, um, underserved population, support early diagnosis, and of course, access to treatment and prevention services. However, um, as a country, the current challenges include the issues around the high cost of acquisition. There is also low demand. There are issues around regulatory bottleneck and urbanization of HIV ST services. Um, some of what we found out or what you could realize right now is that uh, because of the high cost of acquisition, the product is majorly uh, found within the urban areas. And of course, um, we all would understand looking at the current economic situation in the country and the current challenges we face, that situating HIV self-test in the public sector uh, is, may not be, will not be sustainable in the long run. Um, this is where we are as a country, but it's actually great as we're going to look at how do we um, address the gap and how do we begin to achieve the last mile, which is very key for us. Next slide, please. Now, what is total market approach? I think it's imperative or it's very important. We have a shared understanding and then we'll begin to discuss um, what are some of our thoughts on how to go about it and one of the things, some of the things we could use. As we look at the total market, um, one is looking at development of what you call coordinated plans across more than one sector. And within the head space, we know that head is on the concurrent list. So we're looking at both the public and the private. And of course, there's a critical segment of it where most of the development workers are around their play, which is either the not-for-profit or sometimes um, the faith-based organization falls within that um, category. So we're looking at development of coordinated plans across more than one sector, which aims at one to increase coverage. And then secondly, to also begin to broaden the client base. And it's important we understand the, the, the we marry these two in terms of both the demand and the supply side. Some others have looked at it are using the comparative advantages of all sectors, looking at both the public, the not for profits, and of course the commercial sectors to strengthen distribution of products or services. In this case, we are looking at how we begin to use this approach to begin to strengthen both the distribution of the HIV self testing services and of course the product itself. Um, the principles is built on what we call the four P's of marketing, which is place, price, promotion, and product. But of course, with the customer at the center of it all to drive, um, to, to use all of these four P's to drive to admit the customers. Um, globally, or to be no, known globally is the fact that uh, total market ensures sustainability on the long run. It also helps to build what you call continuous access. We look at both issues around availability and affordability. And of course, it supports market growth and also encourage increasing participation of private sector players in HIV intervention. And this is very key as we begin to look at the journey towards self-reliance. Um, this is just to show a roadmap of how we can use TMA to drive evidence to drive total market. One is to begin to look at what are the current barriers or the enablers that are known or unknown within the HIV self-test. Um, those insights when generated will help us to begin to look at um, what the country's current landscape is, and then um, issues around how do we begin to engage stakeholders, because these are very key as we begin to drive total market across all the sectors. Of course, that will also lead us to begin to look at what are the markets, what are the markets saying, what's the behavior of the market, and how do we begin to lose TMA? Because TMA will help us to, work to address what you call facilitating a people-centered healthcare. Of course, we could use market research findings to address barriers and then to support enablers, and then ultimately to begin to develop the market. 
this is not new as a country because we've used it to begin to develop some of the some products or some um, services within the country. Next slide. Now, looking at um, the HIV self test, um, in terms of the context between what are the enablers and barriers, uh, we know that if we begin to use, um, if we begin to apply the total market approach, uh, one of the things that we can begin, we begin to enable us to do is that it help us to stimulate demands. Um, Dr. Katsby spoke about the convenience of use. And so we begin to drive that as an advantage because that's one of the key selling points of this technology. Of course, issues around um, whether pharmacies or the various distribution channels, whether through community-based distributors or whatever approach you want to use, we begin to see how we can begin to use, um, up, create demand at that place and then begin to show linkages and how that can also begin to um, support that. There's also the issues of some of the barriers that we need to begin to look at, which includes issues around stigma, suspicion, religion, lack of awareness, and of course, um, self or self-inflicted stigma. There's also the purchase a, a part of it, which is also key, because as we begin to drive the demand and people are attracted, we must also begin to provide enablers and reduce barriers to what will make people um, procure these commodities, either in terms of the unassisted use. And of course, we must begin to look at the issues around how do we begin to use private sector or the commercial sector to further deepen that. Uh, we all understand the issues around um, high out of pocket payments in Nigeria. We all also understand the issues around how within the community systems, some of the structures available to help to uh, provide some financial support or some financial benefit. But also importantly, how do we begin to use um, the entire private sector system as it is in the country to support availability vis-a-vis -vis the fact that these are uh, channels or opportunities that could be used to reach um, some of our very um, hard to reach area, which is one of the um, gaps or challenges that has been identified in terms of HIV testing service. The other issues is, of course, I've talked about enablers in terms of how we begin to improve distribution and uh, ensure access, which could either be online, and of course it could either be physical. We know that there's a growing um, online market where we also understand the population of the country in terms of the number of young persons. And I found, we think that, um, I think that by the time we begin to use the online, we'll be able to reach a lot of the, what we call the AYPs, the adolescent and young uh, population. Of course, we also begin to address the barriers around the drug channels in Nigeria, price. Um, Dr. Kadby shared issues around the willingness to pay price study. But of course, we know that in terms of the current cost of acquisition is quite high within the commercial sector. So we must begin to limit those barriers or begin to help to um, overcome those barriers, issues around product display, and of course, knowledge of where to buy them and regulatory or what you call registration in Nigeria. The issues around use information materials is also key because these are what uh, we need to, the enablers that we need to begin to strengthen as we look at the total market. The informational materials, looking at it in terms of how messages will be communicated, both in the common language, which is English, and of course, in the various local contexts. And in case for people who cannot read and write, how we can begin to use that. More minutes. Okay, thank you. Diagrammatic um, approach to begin to look at it. And of course, one thing that is very key is also the issues of linkage to care and prevention. Uh, particularly for the reactive and also, of, of course, for the non-reactive. Next, next slide, please. So if we want to adopt, um, adopting TMA to drive equitable and sustainable access to HIV ST, what do we need to change? One of the issues that we need to look at are the issues around policy and regulation. Um, currently, there are quite a number of regulatory bottlenecks, and so that needs to change and which, of course, is very key. What needs to change is also how we're going to use advocacy to drive support. Um, we also use advocacy to drive um, how to begin to attract um, support to be able to address gaps. The issues around finance, cost of acquisition, but also issues very closely around how patients or clients or persons are able to have access to procuring um, the HIV ST. The issues around human resources and capacities at the local level, we need to begin to look at um, easy and quick gains 
scalable means, sustainable means to begin to build capacities. And of course, um, the service delivery points, they are very key. And this must change if we want to begin to look at using total market approach to drive equitable and sustainable access to HIV self test. Next slide, please. I, I, I guess this is my, my second to the last slide, but of course, um, looking at what will form what you call the game changer, will be the fact that if we are able to address, um, change some of the issues that I've raised in my earlier slide, one of the things that would happen is that it will have to begin to broaden cross-sector participation vis-a-vis um, -vis the fact that as we look at issues around regulation, um, as we look at issues around pricing, um, it will help to broaden the cross-sector participation. It will also begin to cause what you call the attraction of the private sector. And, and this is very key as we look at sustainability. Um, it will also begin to look at issues around equitable distribution, thereby providing access to services. And uh, some of the things we are beginning to propose, uh, which is key, is how we begin to use community pharmacies, how we use creatively the patent and proprietary medicine vendors, um, how we also begin to use community-based distributors, particularly in the areas where we begin to look at subsidy. Um, this is very key. And most importantly, um, which is how we begin to use the primary health care center services within the community as it speaks to both the PPMVs and all of this to drive access. Of course, it also begin to help to broaden consumers' choices. And we know that once we brought in consumers' choice, as we look around the issues around regulation, one of the key output of that is that it will lead to competition. And currently in country, we just have a few of those kits that have been um, licensed. So when we brought in consumer choices, we increase competition. Once we increase competition, um, ultimately, as we begin to look at the market dynamics and the market forces, it will begin to help to drive down price. Um, one of the things that will also help us as we look at the multiplicity of players is what you call the consumer segmentation. Um, this is around the socioeconomic group, low, medium, and high income earners. Uh, we'll begin to, the market naturally will begin to find a way of how to begin to position different products to address these different socioeconomic groups. Some players who want to play within the low income earners, um, those who are looking at the scale in terms of volume, some who want to play around the mid price, and then those who want to play around the high income players, particularly as they begin to look around um, um, brand equity, uh, will begin to provide all of that. And I think that once we put that on the table, it will also help to begin to um, address issues around sustainability. Of course, um, financial burden and value for money, and then increasing supply competition and service delivery points, of course, and then the use of channels and PSC, this will help to drive placement. Um, one of the gates changer will also means that um, we'll see a large support in terms of market one development. One Thank you. A large support in terms of market development and demand creation. And ultimately, um, you will all agree with me in terms of the presentation is that this will lead to what we have, what I, I want to agree or what I want to term the issues around sustainability on the long run. Thank you and over from me. Yeah, thank you very, very much, sir, uh, for that good presentation. And like I mentioned earlier, opportunity will be given to us to ask questions. So I hope you are noting down your questions and your comments. Uh, I will now be introducing the, the first speaker. The third speaker is... Um, Dr. Karen Hazard. Uh, she's uh, the Director of HIV Self Testing Africa Initiative, Global Associate Director of HIV and TB programs. Uh, so your bio will be right after which you can jump in and begin your presentation. Over. Dr. Karen Hazard is a public health physician with over 25 years of experience in designing managing, implementing, and researching public health interventions with focus on biomedical HIV prevention, care and treatment, and SRH services. Karin is the director of the Unit Aid funded HIV Self-Test in Africa STAR project implemented in 13 countries in Africa and Asia.
to catalyze the market for HIV self-testing. Star success, as been outlined by multi-country and multidisciplinary evidence, demonstrating acceptability, accuracy, and scalability across several delivery models and populations with rapid translation into WHO's guidelines and national policy. Thank you very much for the introductions. Perhaps we can go to the first slide. That's not the first slide. Could you go back to the first slide? OK, I think the first slide has been cut. Um, that was the introductory slide. Um, perhaps just go back um, to the previous slide. You have cut my presentation, that's all right. Um, thank you very much for the introductions and, and thanks to the organizers for uh, the, just go back to the first slide uh, to my bio because you don't have my first slide, but I can quickly speak to that. Yeah, just keep it there and I give you the command to go to the next slide, okay? <laughs> thank you very much for the invitation to speak at this uh, webinar. Um, as you have heard, I'm the director for the HIV Safe Testing Africa project. Um, over the last uh, six years, researchers and implementers have developed a, a robust evidence base, generated a viable market that led to rapid scale up of HIV self-testing in Africa and Asia and also actually around the world. Self-testing has also accelerated healthcare simplification and transformation for communities and healthcare workers in these high HIV burden settings, providing an opportunity to transform health infrastructure, delivery models, and community engagement. In my presentation, I will lay out the roadmap for HIV self-testing implementation, the different steps along the road, and the critical lessons learned and the tools that have been developed along the road that may facilitate and help governments and implementers with the introduction and scale up of self-testing, even beyond HIV. Uh, and our, we have actually been able uh, to create the necessary advocacy to catalyze additional donor investments. STAR is the largest evaluation of HIV self-testing and it's led by Population Services International in partnership with the London School of Hygiene and Topical Medicine. Ministries of Health uh, in the countries in which we implemented this program, uh, local research partners, implementers and WHO providing overall uh, technical support for the research as well as for policy development at country level. Next slide. This slide uh, is giving you an overview of the HIV self-testing policy and market development from the early stages up to now. As you can see, actually at the beginning, the history of HIV self-testing goes back to 1986. The first HIV self-test dis discussions and possibilities were evaluated there in, in a meeting. Uh, 2005, uh, FDA reviews the first HIV safe test kit, which then contributed uh, to the FDA approval of the first HIV safe test kit uh, for, for safe test use or the ORAQUIC from ORASHUA in 2013. Um, that is six years or seven years later. Um, the first HIV international meeting on HIV safe testing was convened in 2013. Um, and then Everything got very quickly uh, mobilized through the unity investment in HIV safe testing market development in 2015 through STAR, as you can see here highlighted on this, um, on this in the picture in red, uh, which then uh, contributed with the evidence to the recommendation of HIV safe testing and assisted partner notification that were released uh, by WHO in 2016. And very quickly afterwards, um, we developed implementation guidance, strategic and impact framework for HIV self-testing. Um, in 2020, HIV self-testing, uh, as it was seen as the key for COVID adaptation um, and the consideration for HIV self-testing in the context of COVID-19 were developed. Now in 2020, uh, 93 countries, as from the beginning when we started with STAR, it was only three countries that had actually policies in place for HIV self-testing. 2020, 93 countries had policies in place. We have uh, currently four uh, uh, pre-qualified HIV self-test kits uh, that are varying from a price of $1.50 to $3. Um, the market size currently, in 2020 uh, was 10 million uh, self-test kits uh, with uh, a procurement for, for view of uh, 21 million uh, test kits uh, and now increased to 32 million. Next slide. 
recognizing the policy and market purviers unitate uh, invested in this large uh, scale research um, that we call STAR um, to our, you know, for th that was uh, looking at implementation and market shaping um, with uh, the STAR and the ATLAS project. Um, the shift to HIV self-testing was driven by a need for better, less costly, less complex HIV diagnostic strategies, particular in sub-Saharan Africa. The shift to HIV self-testing is also driven by the universal health coverage agenda towards demedicalization of HIV diagnostics and accelerated access to HIV prevention services, promoting self-care and self-management, which we have seen is important in the context of COVID-19. HIV self-testing is one of the first self-care approaches in HIV programming and lessons learned from the prototype can also drive the agenda for other self-test and self-care options. We have since developed um, self-test kits uh, for COVID-19 and also for hepatitis C. That is also part of the, the STAR initiative now. Underlying the public health agenda and evidence agenda was also the market development agenda to shape the market for HIV self-test kits, ensuring the development of multiple high-quality HIV self-test kits that met the needs of different populations and thereby driving demand and volumes, putting in place regulatory processes for the introduction of these tests and gathering evidence for the usability in real-world settings and creating the demand for multiple self-test products through multiple channels and distribution approaches. So this diagram lays out the roadmap and the different stages of the self-test evidence agenda addressing the policy and market development needs, moving from the formative development stage to product introduction and early stage up to optimization and delivery at scale. Uh, this was and is the agenda that underpins the STAR initiative, so the three different phases at global level, and it's also a roadmap for HIV self-testing implementation at country level. So I have pulled out a few critical milestones for evidence and learnings along this roadmap that will help accelerate an implementation at scale. Next slide. So a very important aspect uh, of the work on HIV self-testing is based on the development and trial of best suitable HIV self-testing approaches for distribution and linkages. We have, to, have heard this in our previous uh, presenters as well uh, from the focus on key populations and also in the total market uh, um, market approach uh, presentation earlier on. Um, these, these distribution models need to be tailored to the priority populations that we want to reach. So a priority population here on the left hand side, you know, couples and partners, men in hyperepidemic environments, key populations, young people and other at risk populations. These are the populations that are currently People not knowing their uh, that we have. Yeah, five more minutes, Mark. Five more minutes. Um, I think I have 15 minutes for this presentation. I have timed my time for this, so I would need a bit more time. Sorry. Uh, with HIV self testing, we've also to consider that people have the right uh, tools to link to self test users and either confirmative testing or to un uh, an antiretroviral therapy or HIV prevention services. Next slide. Just showing you some of the outputs here uh, from the research that we have done. The focus, obviously, um, to uh, was to uh, demonstrate cost effectiveness. We have did a lot of uh, economics assessment and uh, cost effectiveness modeling. Uh, this slide is from our cost and cost effectiveness work that we have done under STAR, and you can see we can achieve commodity econo economies of scale with accelerated distribution of self test kits. A very good example is the distribution of self test kits at busy marketplaces, hotspots. Let's, such as taxi ranks and transport port hubs in, in urban areas in southern Africa. Next slide. The choice of distribution models and targeting uh, to reach those at high risk of HIV is also important. We have seen that the task cost per positive case identified decreases with increased targeting and unit costs come down very quickly across settings with higher reactivity rates among safe testers. So from the public health perspective, uh, and the programmatic perspective, uh, targeting interventions for HIV self-testing can be important parameter, important, especially um, as we know, poorly targeted HIV self-testing will continue to miss people who do know, not know their status. So we need to think about identifying those new HIV cases and do so and achieve the first 90. We need to ensure that we are testing where there are many undiagnosed people. Here we see how unit costs come down very quickly across settings with higher reactivity rates. Next slide. 
So when we're looking at the factors that are important to consider for HIV programming and choice of distribution model as they're driving cost effectiveness of HIV self-testing for HIV diagnosis, the lower the prevalence of undiagnosed HIV, the more interventions need to be targeted to be cost effective. The size and the risk of HIV in the subpopulation receiving HIV self-testing is also very important. The effectiveness of HIV self-testing programming is also very important um, on how successfully self-testers are linked to treatment and prevention and whether HIV self-testing is offered on a continuous basis or as a campaign style targeted intervention. Last but not least, the overall cost of HIV distribution can be reduced if HIV self-testing is integrated with existing services, such as workplace interventions or distribution to pharmacies, as compared to vertical mo models that are relying on specific service provision offering HIV self-testing. Next slide. So HIV self-testing became instrumental in the context of COVID-19. Focus during the COVID-19 pandemic was to maintain access to treatment is, not was, uh, we're still going through the next phase, phase four, um, to maintain access to treatment and care for those already on antiretroviral therapy. And in many countries, especially testing services and new initiations of ART were affected, especially in South Africa. We saw a huge reduction in HIV testing coverage during this time and huge reductions in HIV um, in, in, uh, ART initiations. So COVID, uh, HIV self-testing came in very handy uh, to maintain HIV testing services. Um, and therefore, we, we have seen a really huge increase actually in the commodities uh, procurements um, over this period of time. Next slide. This is quickly showing you uh, the impact that uh, of HIV self-testing during COVID-19. This is the example of Eswatini, uh, where uh, the uh, national lockdown was announced in March 2020. Um, and you're seeing here that uh, the Ministry of Health announced a hold for community HIV testing services, including index contact tracing. Um, so we focused the shift there to provide HIV self-test kits near those business, businesses and continued operating, including pharmacies and food stores. So um, according to the updated forecast modeling analysis, there was an increase in the need for self-testing in the range of um, 13 to 18 uh, percent across the two markets. Uh, so HIV self-testing procurement and distribution increased uh, in quarter um, two of 2020 onwards for several distribution models, uh, online distribution, pharmacy distribution, uh, and they were leveraged during lockdown um, in COVID-19. So you see that huge impact in the increases in the procurement for HIV self-test kits during the lock lockdown. Next slide. So the experience gained with using HIV self-testing to maintain HIV testing services and form the recommendations that were released by STAR and, our, and WHO um, to, um, in 2020. I spoke already about this. So important to really strategically think about how we uh, prioritize HIV self-testing for specific populations with the weirdest needs. Um, so the HIV self-testing approaches include distribution for personnel use and, and, and sexual or drug injecting partners, key populations obviously uh, for people living with HIV and social context of key populations in high uh, risk HIV burden settings uh, pre to, to, uh, to even distribution to pregnant women to maintain testing services uh, during pregnancy and, and breastfeeding. And then other priority session uh, settings also include pickup at facilities, community setting, virtual platforms, um, and on pharmacies. Next slide. Um, just wanted to summarize again this strategic shift for HIV self-testing programming that also contributed to the larger investment in HIV self-testing. So the initial uh, and thinking is was around HIV self-testing was seen to, to mainly intervene to fill the testing gap, reaching those remaining people living with HIV who do not know their status. But HIV self-testing and uh, self-care are also critical for reaching global goal and universal health coverage. So scale up of HIV self-testing is driving a movement towards demedicalization of HIV testing services and acceleration of prevention access, putting more emphasis on self-care and agency over one's health, um, increasingly equ uh, equity access and decreasing costs to the health delivery system. Third, HIV self-testing in the context of COVID-19 has enabled us to maintain HIV testing services, decongestion of healthcare facilities, reducing the burden on healthcare workers through pickup at facilities or community sites, and through mailing pharmacies, retail vendors, and vending machines. 
Fourth, HIV self-testing can also optimize linkage to prevention, linkage to PrEP and PEP programming, a very important aspect in the changing HIV epidemic. WHO is actually currently uh, working on the development of recommendations for use of HIV self-testing for initiation, continuation and monitoring of PrEP. Next slide. Let us now just go back to the market development agenda and how catalytic investment by Unifed created the market for HIV self-testing. I think this is what we're very interested here in during my presentation. Unifed invested in the market development was very catalytic, as you can see here, uh, where there have been a large procurement of HIV self-testing in 13 uh, star countries, with a total of 5 million self-tests were in, uh, in, introduced here. Um, there, uh, this, this created demand increased absorption of capacity and set up the enabling environment to transition to uh, external and country level investments. So as you can see here, the larger procurement happened in 2018 and investment reduced uh, tremendously, uh, increasing the investment by other donors, by PEPFAR and Global Fund that supported HIV self-testing scale up. Next slide. So where are we now um, on the scale for HIV self-testing market? I don't see the next slide. The market cycle and what needs to be done. Can we go to the next slide? Um, I think the slide is blocked, is that correct? It appears that we have lost uh, Dr. Hazel. Sorry. Okay. You, okay. You see, there. we can't find your slides anymore. How many more slides you have now? Um, I. You don't have any more slides for me. Um, I have shared these slides with you yesterday. Um, so. Do you want me to share the slides? So I want to know how many more slides are left. I, there are four slides more. You have a short time, but over three minutes. Okay. okay. All right, please. Can you summarize? Go on. Go on. Good. So I um, said to you that uh, this is the slide on the scale up for, each, for the market cycle. I think you have to put yourself on mute, otherwise I have an echo. And what needs to be done? Uh, again, perhaps we can go to the next slide. This shows you the um, overview of the HIV self tested products and the landscaping and the pricing. Um, so we have five products with either ERPD or WHO pre-qualification, four blood-based products, and we will be seeing major price reduction in 2021, as you can see on the slide. Um, so um, with uh, the market intervention that uh, United and STAR did um, in the beginning of this year, we were able to reduce the price uh, for two blood-based products um, reduced to under $1.50 uh, $1, uh, $1. for one test kit and uh, $1.99 for the second one. Um, this uh, brought these products to the same level as the oral fluid test and has dominated that has dominated the market uh, since the introduction of HIV self-testing. So this is likely to further stimulate the market, increase competition and result in additional price reductions. As you can see in the slide, uh, we are likely to see the price for these HIV self-test it's uh, going down to even uh, below um, $1.50, uh, perhaps even going further towards uh, the $1 mark. Next slide to these market interventions. Next slide. These are some of the market uh, interventions that we uh, that we have planned with Unitate and Star. So we conducted a PSM benchmarking exercise twice in 2020 to bring down the PSM cost for these products down on the global market. Uh, we work with WHO um, and Ministries of Health um, and technical working groups to ensure that the PSM tools are integrated into the national systems for the remaining countries. Uh, we also uh, continue to update the national subnational forecasting template for 2020. We did this in many countries, including Nigeria. 
um, and we will be also continuing to procure and deliver blood-based tests under the market intervention at this um, leveraged price in that is available to over 170 countries, low and middle income countries, to which um, included also Nigeria. Um, next slide. Nearly done. Um, this is showing you uh, the growth of the HIV self-testing market in the six countries in which uh, we were directly intervening and that benefited from the unity and catalytic investment. You see uh, the, uh, the, the contribution of HIV self-testing towards the overall testing market in these countries. You see the huge increase uh, of um, the non unity um, uh, donor investments here over time. Uh, and on the right hand side, you, you're seeing this and the ratio for 2019-2020. So with this catalytic investment, huge investment actually from PEPFAR and Global Fund in these countries that contributed to their self-test kit procurement and uh, delivery. Next slide. Very quickly on global level, uh, you, you show here, this is showing you the overall need for HIV self-testing. The need is uh, calculated for 25 focus countries and then extrapolated to 108 low and middle income countries based on their epidemic uh, type and, and region. And you see uh, the need estimate is used as a basis against which expected future HIV self-testing uptake can be applied. Um, so currently it's estimated that um, 180 million HIV self-test kits are needed in 2021, which is growing up to 192 million by 2025. Next slide. This is showing you the expected um, procurement volumes um, for over the next years. Um, so you can see this up to 2024. This is the anticipated um, uh, investment in self-testing. Um, so the, we showed you the pipeline for confirmed volumes in uh, is 32 million HIV self-testing between 2021 to 2024, um, which is a substantial increase from 20 uh, from last year's estimates. Um, it was only 22 million uh, for 20, 2020 to 2023. Um, so it's really thanks to the large part in steps of the Global Fund and SIF that have provided the matching fund, especially for HIV self-testing, and also um, very much increased investment funding by PEPFAR that um, is not yet fully completed here in this slide, the PEPFAR investments over the next years. Next slide. So um, HIV self-testing is a, has a growing market for and has many opportunities, and there are news and forecast of, of forthcoming procurement opportunities um, through, for example, the Global Fund. Uh, the Global Fund has maximized its investment in HIV self-testing through its investment case strategy depicted here. PEPFAR, PAO, Strategic Fund, as well as domestic governments are also other opportunities. But there's still a huge funding gap to reach the current demand um, and the need, as I've shown you in the previous slide, for us implementers and market shapers, this means further growing the demand and increasing the use of multiple affordable products. Next slide. It's my summary slide, my last slide. So uh, in summary, HIV self-testing and self-care are more broadly uh, critical for reaching global goals and universal health coverage. Uh, we have seen the opportunities to expand self-testing in response to COVID-19. Um, and there are also other future directions for testing more broadly for self-test more broadly that were initiated through the HIV self-testing. HIV self-testing is offering quality options and many service delivery op uh, approaches. Um, we have uh, established the evidence and we have uh, influenced normative guidance and implementation guidance at country level that needs to be optimized. Uh, we have a couple of products that are WHO pre-qualified. We have a very strong pipeline and we're seeing also huge price reductions in the unit cost for these um, self-test kits. We have a growing market with many opportunities. There are new and forthcoming procurement opportunities with global funds, specifically PEPFAR, PAO, um, and also uh, domestic investments. Uh, but there's still a funding gap, as I said, uh, and we need all to work on to fill this funding gap for the self-test scale-up. Next slide. I would like to acknowledge all my uh, collaborators uh, on this work and the different um, 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 partners that are working on the STAR program, as well as my colleagues from WHO, uh, the Global Fund and PEPFAR, and all the researchers and implementers and communities and ministries of health with which we have worked uh, to make this work. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Hazard. That was a very lengthy one. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, covered quite a lot of stuff during your presentation. We we'll appreciate you. Um, just to take us a little bit back, I will just summarize what um, the earlier presenter presented while they will do some things at the background. I to plus some slides. We talked about total market approach uh, to drive equitable and sustainable access to HIV self test. Then uh, the presenter started by talking about the journey so far, and then they actually emphasized the role of HIV test kits in, uh, for us to actually bridge the gap that we have in coverage and achieving the UNN targets. Also talked about challenges like high costs, and then now uh, also how we look how to look mainly how it seems to be mainly distributed in the urban areas as against rural areas. And then he swooped down on the market approach that uh, needed uh, it has to cut across various sectors, uh, also public and private. It also be, uh, also built a four uh, piece of marketing, which will ensure uh, and we also need to ensure sustainability. He talked about how to the uh, evidence for TMA. We have to look at the barriers, the enablers, and then also look at the landscape. And then market research to inform us on effective marketing for HIV self test. Um, he talked um, also uh, we need to attract, purchase, and then use, you know, one step leading to other until the person is linked to care and prevention. Okay, he also talked about what changes need to take place. We need to look at our policy and regulatory environment. Also, we need to do Good advocacy for the relevant uh, individuals and organizations. Also, talk about finances, which is very important, especially when you talk about the affordability of the test kit. He talked about human resources, also service delivery points. And then he talked about the game changer. We need to bring in public and private. We have to bring in competition to drive down the cost and then make more choices available to the consumers. Also, consumer segmentations address financial barriers. And then game changer that also be needed is the mind creation, and then eventually we need to have what is sustainable. So that is summarizing that. So I will summarize that of Dr. Hazard and Dr. Fad, the next speaker after they have spoken. I'm sure now they've updated the slide. Also, so it's my pleasure to introduce our final speaker. Our final speaker is Dr. Akudo Bazo. She is a national coordinator of the National AIDS and Sexually Transmitted Infection Control Program in Nigeria, that's NASCAP. Um, your bio will be read out, Ma, and then you can jump in with your presentation. Thank you, and over. Dr. Akudo Ikweazu has two decades of experience in public health policy, program development, and strategic planning. She has a direct responsibility for designing and deploying public health programs, including those for HIV AIDS, maternal, newborn, and child health at different levels of the health system. She has provided leadership for designing and implementing innovative approaches for scaling up access to HIV prevention, treatment, and care services. She currently leads the National HIV and STI Control Program of the Federal Ministry of Health in Nigeria. Dr. Akud Beazu S. So thank you very much, um, Dr. Ndukwe. And um, let me just acknowledge the work that other speakers before me have done and uh, the great foundation that you have all laid. I think it kind of makes my work much easier. And of course, in the interest of time, to enable um, for discussions. I'm going to keep it really short. Um, so what I want to do now is um, go directly to trying to address the coordination and regulatory barriers for self-testing in Nigeria. And this first slide essentially gives a background and establishes the case for while, why um, we need in innovative approaches to close the gaps and reach the last mile. 
and self-testing does stand out as um, a very important strategy for doing that. Next, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, I will just proceed. Um, I think the very first presenter already um, laid out very clearly the need for um, coverage for men, for young people, for key populations, and for people in custodial centers. Um, in terms of the policy environment, I'm on the fourth slide. You may just uh, go to the fourth slide with me, please. In terms of the policy environment, I just want to say that Nigeria has really established a very good and strong policy environment in support of um, HIV self-testing. As far back as 2017, the very first um, time that the national guidelines for HIV testing services recognized the need to include self-testing, that was 2017. And um, in 2018, there was a specific document which focused on self-testing. Um, I have got that in the slide and it shows um, that document. I'm not sure why there's an echo. Yeah. Then in 2020, that's last year, we had uh, the National Guidelines for Prevention, Treatment and Care which actually focused on putting in place innovative strategies that would be key for scaling up um, testing. Within that document, go to the next slide, please. Within that document, uh, we have risk stratification, clearly there, recency testing, index testing, social network testing, nucleic acid testing, and birth. And uh, those were actually areas in which it focused on in, in the effort to look at innovation and again self-testing was clearly captured within that. Now we have for this year worked on revising the HIV guidelines and um, clearly the areas that relate to self-testing that have been amplified within that document and uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks in the coming weeks that document will be released but just to give a preview um, it captures very clearly the in, in need to increase focus on community awareness advocacy um, self-testing in terms of what happens within the facility index testing partner um, testing of partners of uh, positives pregnant women and um, of course breastfeeding women, the need for social media approaches, and of course total market approach. That already has been clearly captured within our national guidelines, and that is a good thing. And um, going further in terms of the policy environment, um, there has also been some work um, to address the issue of demand creation for self-testing. Um, that has been done side by side with demand creation for PrEP, but it does address that and provides a complementary pool um, of uh, materials that would facilitate demand creation. So what are the challenges in terms of coordination and um, what are the things, um, how do we address and ensure that those barriers can be removed? Um, so I'm just going to talk very quickly about this. One of the areas that created difficulties in the past, which we have overcome, is uh, the big coordination entities, um, and that would be NACA and NASCA. Um, at the start, there was a bit of lack of clarity in terms of role, but that we have um, clearly addressed now. And um, for NACA, it's, a lot of it is around demand creation, in line with the focus of NACA's work around the broader prevention um, goals. And of course, for NASCA, more attention is towards coordination of implementation and addressing the policy issues for HIV self-testing. Another issue that has been a, a, a bit of a challenge is really relating to the fact that there are multiple actors and multiple players in terms of implementation. And uh, one of the things that we have seen is um, ensuring that the geographical coverage, there are no overlaps in the geographical coverage. We find right now that there's a lot of focus of actors in the southern states and very little work being done in the northern states. And of course, we appreciate the fact that uh, 
the, the implementation has to follow the evidence in terms of the numbers, in terms of where new infections are coming from, in terms of well, what the prevalence rates is saying. That being said, it's important that no areas are left behind. We also find that there's currently a lot of work in terms of um, focus on key populations, that's also other subpopulation groups. And it's important to see that adolescents and young people, um, especially young women and girls, are also not left behind. Now, how do we stimulate private sector interests? That question has come up in the previous discussions. Of course, this is in the context of uh, the fact that on the HIV programming side, we have very limited control over um, market forces. And so if CMA is going to be a very important component of what we do going forward, we need to have a way of addressing that. We need to have a way of stimulating um, and supporting what happens within the private sector and ensuring that enough interest can be stimulated in terms of the benefits um, from a profit making perspective. Um, and the other question that would arise is how do we provide oversight? Private sector oversight is not totally um, something that is firmly in our hands. And so addressing those barriers would be very important as we go forward. And then also there are um, issues with the regulation and those have also been alluded to. Um, one is the pricing, which we've seen from the last presentation, especially that it is high, it is out there. Um, and the question is, how do we address? How do we address and uh, trying also to bring the balance? Um, a lot of the conversation I can see has happened around the public health space and the social marketing. But there is so much we can do in terms of controlling pricing for those for whom this is supposed to be um, profit making. And also bring in the balance in terms of the space for the three different um, groups. So that is the public health, social marketing, and commercial sectors. Now the question is, what are we trying to promote? How much um, in terms of the weighting, what space should each of this occupy? And when we look at the TMA, one of the principal things is really around sustainability. And sustainability means that the com commercial sector, we have to, as much as possible, aim to expand it. The other issue that arises um, relates to quality of um, self-tests quality of self-tests. Right now, um, from some of the evidence that is coming through, there are quite a number of um, test kits out there, many of them not evaluated. Um, to date, we know that Aura, Peak, and Amethyst have been evaluated and validated for use in Nigeria. But the question is, there's a lot out there, and what are we going to do in terms of ensuring that all these can meet the standards, the minimum quality-wise that have been defined. Um, there's also a lot of uh, marketing of this online, and that question remains because when it's out there online, um, it's not within a space like a pharmacy or outlets where it is a little bit easier to regulate. So those questions um, do come up. And of course, the big elephant in the room, and that would be um, where I pitch. Um, that relates to overall overlapping roles of regulatory bodies. Um, we've started conversations around this, but this has been a very difficult conversation because uh, the agencies all have some enable, enabling law that permits them to do what they're doing. And that is really something that we're trying to see how to intervene um, and address. Uh, so, of course, there's NAVDAC, there's uh, standards organizations, and there's the uh, Medical and Laboratory, the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, which all have some rules in terms of regulation, in terms of um, evaluations and communication. And the question um, I've put out there is um, NASCAP. And just to clarify that for NASCAP, we don't have, there's no problem, there's no overlap, because NASCAP's role within this is quite clear, and it has to do with validating for use in country. And that we do not consider to be a barrier, but rather a facilitator 
for not just um, the validation but promotion of use of rapid test kits. And I will just end with a few reflections. Um, the first is just to say that we have to continue to address quality standards and the performance of this um, test kit. But an important factor is actually the usability, ensuring that um, product literacy can be addressed and materials are available to address and provide simple guidance for potential users. We also have to look at the distribution of um, self-test kits, and I have spoken to that. And really one key interest for us from a coordination perspective and from um, driving the policy around this relates to what I spoke about earlier. How much space do we intend to a lot for the public health space, for the social marketing space, and of course, for the commercial sector. That would be very key going forward. Um, and this addresses also the issue of distribution. A lot of conversation has happened around distribution. We've talked a lot about distribution. And that also raises the question um, which, which I brought up earlier. What do we want to push? It's important that we we push towards having the market and the, the, the commercial sector occupy the largest space for this in the interest of um, sustainability. And I think the last thing that I want to talk about is really about the counting the numbers, counting the numbers. And um, again, that relates to what space is going to be the largest space? What space would be the largest space? And I would end with this. We cannot count numbers um, except this is within the public uh, public health space, which should ideally be the smallest. And so what do we need? What is going to be necessary um, for oversight, for self-testing going forward? And I will end with this. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kudo, uh, for the presentation. I was, I, our time is so limited. We lost some time due to technical hitches, and then also some of our presentation, uh, you know, went a little bit beyond time, and they were supposed to close 1.30. But uh, I've been told we can be given 10 more minutes beyond uh, our time now to entertain questions and comments. Some have already been typed. I'll just read some of the top questions that I have written down. And so as I read out the questions, I want um, any of our presenters who, you know, if it's, if that question is for your presentation, you can just jump in and answer. The first one is how, uh, this one said, can we have access to the recording after the presentation? That will not go to any of the presenters. It will be organizer, they will respond to that. What is the UNS doing to increase awareness among young population? The, this question wrote on the background that the awareness is low among young population. And then the final one I was able to read from the chat is how do we track our positive clients and put them on treatment? So those are the ones, uh, I, I, I don't know whether any hand is up, but can we respond to these ones? And then if there's more, I will read them out to us. Thank you, Anova. OK, maybe just to answer the first one in terms of what UN is doing to attract young persons, I guess um, uh, there are quite a number of ongoing uh, activities in country, which is geared to us, begin to look at how to create demand that will um, reach out to the young population, particularly as we look at the people between the ages of 18 to 24. So within the country, I know there is the strengthening HIV self test in the private sector. I know that UNICEF is also trying to do a few things in that direction. And I think all of this put together is helping to me to drive um, that uh, just like um, Dr. Akudu has said, quite a number of these activities are maybe 
the demand is low, but even the few that are ongoing are majorly within um, the southern part of the country, maybe very specific in terms of location. So I guess the issue now is how we need to scale up and provide these on a larger scale. I think those are some of the things that the overarching communications will begin to drive in terms of how this will be approached. Thank you and over. Then I think maybe the question on positive clients on treatment, I think those are some of the, um, I know maybe Dr. Katwin may speak to that, but those are some of the challenges right now, is how do we begin to um, provide, ask in terms of people who are reactive, how do we move them to the next stage, which is confirmatory, before you begin to provide them access to treatment and prevention. Those are conversations which quite a number of the um, programs in country are trying to address. But it's also some of the um, gaps that hoping that as we begin to enlist uh, more private sector support, those messaging will continue to grow in terms of how this is managed. Thank you and over from me. Right. Does any other one of our uh, speakers want to jump in? All right. That's you a mentioned that. Uh, Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to quickly mention that, um, you know, tracking of positive is, is actually key um, to HIV self-testing. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why we don't have too many indicators for, for self-testing is because of the privacy attached to it as well. But notwithstanding, we do um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, importance on, on tracking, which is one of the information we also present um, to um, um, the client, even uh, at the preparatory stage. So usually um, there are various ways, um, you know, through phone calls, uh, WhatsApp messages, and also I did mention uh, using peers as well to kind of uh, implement some sort of accompanied referral to um, health facility for, um, you know, following the serial algorithm for retesting um, before they're actually placed on treatment. So yeah, um, we do not take lightly um, the tracking for self-testing, over. Right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, there's a comment here. Uh, I think that comment should go to Dr. Kudo. And the comment says, pharmacies council of Nigeria should be in the mix of regulators since they regulate community pharmacies. And then there's another comment here, and it's a, it's a question. There are four WHO. Sorry, actually, that was a break in transmission. Sorry. So, Karen, uh, I'll be, allow you to speak, but uh, let me read out what she wrote in the chat. Uh, she wrote there are four WHO pre qualified products and two additional products in the pipeline, driving down the unit cost price to $1. You, how can we accelerate the regulation and registration of this WHO pre qualified products in Nigeria? I think that question should be going to Dr. Kudo because she presented our regulatory environment and all that. And then there's uh, another comment here. I'll go through the comments, and then I'll allow Dr. Hazop to speak. On the policy environment, I believe Pharmacist Council of Nigeria is very key, but not mentioned. Okay, I will talk about that. The NAMDA can some come in on the quality of products, which they... Okay, fine. Take note of that. Now, over to you, Karen. Yeah, just uh, my, my comment was, I keep it short, um, was with regards to tracking of clients, um, also to consider, um, we've developed uh, quite interesting uh, uh, client-facing uh, tools uh, that are a chatbot um, tools that follow up, um, that can follow up clients, but also signpost clients to potential clients to self-test kits. So it has different are opportunities actually these are consumer facing um tools that 
um, guide the clients through the testing process, but also collect data uh, on, on, on clients' test use as well as uh, linkage uh, into care and treatment and prevention. Uh, I think these are all quite uh, good tools. They're anonymous, uh, but uh, again, on, we have seen quite hap high uptake actually of, of clients using self-test kits. And again, has many functions, signposting, uh, usage uh, uh, support as well, linkage as well as data collection. But I just wanted to also say one other thing with regards to the tracking. Uh, we have we're working on the WHO um, nearly completion now, our m &E guidance for HIV self-testing uh, together with STAR and, and also the ATLAS project, um, also to uh, consider in the long run, uh, you know, how we can make use of existing data, uh, triangulation of data uh, to, uh, to see the impact of self-testing on, on uptake of treatment and care, uh, because we probably will not be able in the long run, you know, to track uh, clients that have used the self-test into care. Um, so considering that as well, these WHO uh, guidance on, on MNE for HIV self-testing will be coming out and launched uh, very quickly. Um, and I think uh, we should also consider this instead of just tracking individual clients, but will not be feel feasible in the long run. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kudo, you might need to respond to the questions. Some of the questions for you. I don't know that Dr. Akudo is still on the call. Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, well, I've been told we've actually overshot our time. Sorry if we cannot respond to some of your questions, uh, but if you can type them in, I'm sure I reach you personally with some of the answers. I want to appreciate all our presenters. You've done a very good job. We thank you for your time. Um, our presenters include um, Dr. Moses Kabi, Pharmacy Dennis Aziobu, Dr. Catherine Hazard, and Dr. Kudo. Thank you for your presentation. I also want to appreciate all the participants for your time and then be with us all through. And once again, I apologize for some of the hitches we had. Um, the organizers might need to tell us, do you, will you make the recording available? You will not respond to that. Can we close by responding to that question? If the recording will be made available. Yes, sir, the recording will be made available to all those who registered. And everyone who has a question should send them to info at sfhnigeria.org. Questions will be addressed. So I'm going to type the mail that they'll send it to. Thank you. All right, that's a very good one. So uh, all the questions that are coming in now, we are, please send them to the email address or website that will be typed. Please type them. Somebody will respond to those questions. We'll get the speaker to respond to them. And then the recordings will be shared. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, over. Have a very nice day. Bye, everyone.